Hi, my name is Andrew Bruner, and I am a, uh, a medical oncologist who primarily takes care of patients with MDS and other forms of acute leukemia here at Massachusetts General Hospital in Boston, Massachusetts. Um, I have been involved in a study looking at an inhibitor of TIM3, uh, sabotolimab, combined with hypomethylating agents for the treatment of patients with higher risk MDS. Patients with higher risk MDS have a number of unmet needs. Uh, the current treatments that we have produce low rates of overall response. And in MDS in particular, low blood counts plague our patients. They result in the need for frequent transfusions. They result in uh, complications of those uh, low blood counts, including infectious uh, bleeding and other complications that uh, are related to severe anemia. And so therapies are greatly needed to try to better uh, change the treatment of MDS. And over the last decade, we've looked for a number of new targets. Some of these are molecular, but some of these are emerging as novel ways to distinguish between hematopoietic stem cells that are healthy and malignant precursors, so so-called leukemic stem cells or leukemic progenitors. In MDS, we know that uh, blood cancer like this arises from uh, mutations in a founding uh, or early progenitor, and uh, then results in eventually the uh, hematopoiesis becoming uh, malignant um, and from that malignant population. Um, there have been a lot of efforts to try to understand what is it about those malignant cells that are uh, distinct from hematopoietic stem cells in an effort to try to find um, a, a more targeted therapy for uh, the cancer cells themselves. One such cell surface molecule uh, that has been proposed as a molecule that distinguishes leukemic stem cells from healthy progenitors is TIM3. TIM3 also plays a large role in immunity, um, and so is expressed on T cells, macrophages, other immune effector cells as a uh, natural um, regulator of the immune response. Uh, on immune cells populations, TIM3 has been associated with uh, T cell exhaustion or an immune um, exhaustion phenotype. And so, for instance, I think our best understanding of MDS and AML uh, as relates to immunotherapy is through transplant and the graft versus leukemia effect. There is data to suggest that when patients are relapsing, their T cells have an upregulation of TIM3, and that possibly that plays into this T cell exhaustion that permits relapse in that setting. So when we were looking at a possible study for our patients with MDS, uh, the idea that we could target patient MDS with TIM3 was appealing, both because there is some rationale to use it as an immuno-oncologic agent, and as noted with the transplant experience, as well as an evolving understanding of how uh, cellular immunity may interact with um, the malignant cells in MDS and AML. Um, targeting TIM3 may allow for an enhanced immune response against um, cell populations. If that's the case, we would hope that we see more durable responses when you provide that to patients uh, in contrast to our standard azacitidine or decitabine alone. I think that the other really compelling aspect of using a TIM3 inhibitor is this idea that there may be TIM3 expressed on the immature or early progenitors, the early myelodysplastic cell leukemic progenitors that provides a sort of self-renewing uh, autocrine loop. Uh, we know that early progenitors secrete galactin-9, and there is data suggesting that that galactin-9 that's secreted by early progenitors binds to TIM3 on the surface of these malignant uh, precursors and enables a self-renewal loop. And by interfering with that loop uh, by TIM3 inhibition, we may also be able to directly target these early leukemic uh, or MDS blast progenitors. And so um, we hope that we can continue to see both clinically 
um, an enhancement of these uh, uh, mechanisms of action toward specifically toward the MDS uh, cells, but also that we can continue to enhance our understanding of the biology of these interactions because it may show that TIM3 has a, plays a larger number of roles and there are more ways to target it um, as we go further into our clinical trial development and into um, seeing whether these can actually change the standard of care for patients. Thank you.